Hey everybody, welcome to the next video in the series. In this one, we are gonna talk about horizontal sharding, another very powerful technique for sharding. And this is where if you really start to hit big scale where you have tables with many billions of rows in them, you probably will want to use some horizontal sharding. So let's draw some pictures, talk about how this works, and then also see an example of how you would do this in Vitesse. Okay, so over here on the drawing board, again, remember we're gonna use our example with three tables, right? We have C order, so this is the orders, there's also the customer table, customer, and then we have the product table, right? So product, okay. So from before, we had done vertical sharding onto different MySQL sort of sub clusters within Vitesse, right? So I'm gonna say MySQL here, and then MySQL. And of course, these did have replicas as well, but for this picture, I'm gonna ignore drawing the replicas to keep it a little bit simpler. So the way that we had spread this out last time is we put C order and customer over here on one of them and then product on another. But now let's say we're getting to the point where the C order and, and customer tables are not even fitting very well on this one cluster and I wanna start taking the rows and spreading them out across multiple separate MySQL instances. Well, what you can do here is move on to a technique called horizontal sharding, which this is instead of thinking about moving entire tables at once, it's actually taking the rows from tables and distributing them onto different servers. And what you would generally do is put some kind of rule in place. So one technique, which is what we're gonna use in this video, is hashing. So you essentially take the hash of one of your columns from every row, and based on whether that hash falls within a particular range, that range determines what server it goes to. But you could also do something simpler, like if you had an ID, you could say any ID that's between this range and this range, put on one server, between two other ranges, put on another server, and so on and so forth. So for this, in this example, what it's gonna do is it's gonna spin up actually six other instances of MySQL, but again, for the picture, we will ignore the replicas. So I'm just gonna draw two more, right? So MySQL and my SQL. Okay, so it's gonna spin up these other instances and then what it's gonna do is run a workflow called reshard. And so it's gonna take what is these full tables on this instance of my SQL. Let me get a different color here. So on this instance right here, I had these full tables and it's gonna bring those and spread them out where it's gonna send some of the rows to one of these MySQL instances and some of the rows to another MySQL instance. And then once it has completed that process and switched over the traffic, it's gonna actually delete that instance of MySQL. So then the VT gates, let me switch back over to black here. The VT gate, which again, I'm drawing kind of the layout of this a little bit different this time, but the VT gate, if there's a request that comes in for product, it would send that request here. And if there's a request that comes in for a C order or a customer row, it would have to figure out and know about how things were sharded so that it can decide whether the query needs to be routed to this instance of MySQL or whether it needs to go over to that instance of MySQL. And again, horizontal sharding is really powerful because even though in this example, we're spreading it out over a relatively small number of MySQL instances, this could be spread out over thousands, right? So if you actually are dealing with like petabytes of data, you could spread it out across a thousand nodes and still be able to store all of that and handle traffic appropriately. Okay, so now that we've seen pictorially, let's jump in and actually run some of these test scripts to see it working in action with Vitesse. Okay, so we're here in the terminal. Let's take a look at this with Vitesse. So for this section, it's gonna utilize these 301, 302, and so on scripts. So let me show you what's going on in 301 and 302 particularly. So 301, before we actually get to spinning up the new instances of MySQL, is gonna apply a few things with the VT control D client. So it's, if you notice, it's kind of utilizing some of these other files that are in this directory, like create commerce sequence, v schema sequence, and so on. So let me show you what's in a few of these. So this is a SQL script that creates a few sequence tables. So it creates some of these additional tables. And then coming back over here, I wanna look at the v schema commerce sequence. So this is basically, in Vitesse, you have V schema, whereas, okay, so in regular MySQL, right, your schema is like, what are your table definitions and all that kind of stuff? What are your indexes? For Vitesse, the Vitesse schema or the V schema 
specifies things specific to the test. So things like what kind of tables are used for sequences or how is this table gonna be sharded, right? Sort of the test specific schema related stuff. So in here, I created those sequence tables and then this sort of tells the test like, hey, these are tables that I'm gonna use as sequences. And then over here, this is where we start to specify how things are gonna be sharded. So in here, this goes, okay, so you go to tables and for the customer table, it's going to shard this, it's gonna shard the table based on the customer ID column and it's gonna use a hash like I had mentioned before. So it'll hash customer ID to figure out where it's gonna go. But then also it's gonna use that sequence table for auto increment. So when you start to have an auto incrementing ID but it's spread out across many different instances of MySQL, it's nice to have a central place where the ID sequence comes from. So that's what these sequence tables are being used for. And then the C order table is going to be sharded similarly and the product table is not gonna be sharded in this case, right? It's just C order and customer. And then finally, over here, the create customer sharded. This is just some additional SQL to uh, change the tables a little bit, the existing tables over there, okay? So there's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and run this one and then we'll take a look at 302. So that one executed, those workflows went pretty quick. This one is gonna take a little bit longer because this actually spins up the two shards and each shard is gonna have two replicas, right? So there's these two loops and it specifies the shard. So the shard range, this means basically anything in the first half of the range, anything in the latter half of the range, and those are gonna basically handle different hash values that come out of hashing the ID. So this one is gonna take a little while to run because again, this is spinning up quite a few instances of MySQL. But after this runs, if you look in your admin panel, and again, it might take a little bit for it to sync everything up, you should be able to see a bunch more nodes in there. And then we'll actually handle the resharding process using some of the other scripts. And then we'll see how it all worked and make sure that it's working correctly. So that part finished. And so now those other instances have been spun up. Let's look at the 303 reshard script. So this one is one of the key ones and it uses the VT control D client to execute the reshard command. And so it's gonna target the customer key space and it says source shards zero and this has dash 80 and 80 as the two shards to target. So if I go back over to the admin panel and do a refresh, you can see that there's now 12 tablets and some of the tablets that were spun up before have this shard where they're just zero, but some of these new ones, right, say either dash 80 for the first part of the range or 80 dash for the second part of the hash range. So it's basically specifying, hey, everything in the customer key space that was just labeled shard zero, which this was an uncharted key space, I want you to distribute that between this shard and this shard. So it's gonna distribute those rows across the two depending on what the hash values are. Okay, so this one I can go ahead and run to actually begin the process of the sharding. And this is similar to the last one where there's also an additional step to switch over the read traffic to the read only and replica nodes and then switch over the write traffic uh, to the primary nodes. <clears throat> so I went ahead and ran both of those as well. And then lastly, there is a script for cleaning up. So once we've done the resharding and we've switched over the traffic, we no longer need those other instances of MySQL that we're handling the uncharted version, right? So now everything is sharded, so I can go ahead and basically tear down those unneeded ones. <clears throat> and this is one of the cool things about the test, right? It's not like you set up your Vitesse cluster and then it's fixed exactly how it is. Over time, you can add shards, you can add nodes, you can remove them, you can do resharding, right? So you can set up one instance of a cluster and then allow that to sort of grow and change as your data and database needs change over time. Okay, so it's going ahead and stopping those. There might be a little bit of delay between what actually shows up in our view over here. Okay, great. So those other ones were deleted. You can see there's nine tablets now and those sharded key spaces are green. So they're online and they're ready to serve traffic. So what I'm gonna do is go back and run the read traffic script yet again so that I can send insert statements to these. 
And what I should be able to see is that in that sharded key space, both of those primaries should be handling some of the load. So I go back over to here and look at, let's see, let's look at, so this is the primary for one of the shards, that's for 400, and there's a little spike here where it is starting to handle some of that traffic. And then I can go over to the other tablet. So let's see, for this range, that's the other primary, and it also is handling some traffic to that, right? So now the way that this test cluster is set up is because the data is sharded across these nodes, when the VT gate gets a connection and it asks for, hey, give me you know, this C order, this order by this ID, the VT gate will figure out, okay, based on what I know about how you told me to shard all this data, I know that this row lives over on this instance of MySQL or this instance and distributes those appropriately, right? So this is super cool and again, Really, it, it is pretty complicated what it's doing, but because we have all these example scripts, it makes it really nice to kind of get a quick example up and running doing horizontal sharding. So hopefully that overview was very helpful to see how this works. In some of the upcoming videos, what I'm gonna do is actually show you how you can start to spread out your Vites clusters across multiple instances. Because what we're doing here is great for learning, but it's really not very practical to just put everything all on one EC2 instance. So we're going to see how to spread this out a little bit. That'll be very interesting. Thank you for watching this one though. Hopefully you join me for the next video. I'll see you then. Talk to you later.